big up, big up all massive and crew. Yeah, man. Yeah, um, my new album, Man from Studio One. This is out on the street now. It's complete. Jacket and sleeve, everything make already. Yeah, yeah, about them time, they hit the But Chris is kind of slow. I have to be boosting him and pushing him. He's getting orders from all over the world. He's getting orders from Japan everywhere. And then Galo, and he's so slow, he's a snake. But he said, oh, I'm gonna put it out. No, I'm so I love him, I leave him to it. Yeah, Prince Jamie was like, man, um, bigger, they call it. <laughs> he was like a prefect. He was looking after all the kids. Eh? Yeah, if he see you do anything wrong, he can hold you and take you to the headmaster. <laughs> but we love Jamie's because Jamie's a good runner. He's, me and him in the same house, Kelly house. Yeah, my cousin, the Kellys, they sponsor that house. And my other cousin, the Rajas, sponsor one house. And my other cousin, the Alls, they sponsor the next house. Okay. <laughs> so we have uh, Rajas, Kelly, and Al house. So me and Jamie was in the same house. Mm -hmm. Along with um, this artist that sings for Studio One, Anthony Ellis. Okay. Yeah, he's my classmate that as well. No, you never know. I didn't tell him. <laughs> it's one day when my son come out and was playing on the radio. Somebody said, Oi, Charles, you're a son on the radio. I didn't stop again. But from that, he just leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, but like we used to steal out at night and go to dance. I used to like check Roman Stewart and Dennis Brown, young Dennis Brown, young. And a lot of um, Dennis Brown cousin. I can't remember his name right now. Dave Robinson. Yeah, all of us has been like in one posse. <laughs> and we used to like steal out and go to Neptune Lounge, Tit for Tat, The Hat, Top Hat, all of those clubs we used to go. And sometimes the, the guys would like throw us out. They said, oh, boy, you're too young. What are you doing here? Go out. So I said, no, we're going to sing with the band. And we go up there and sing a one song and thing. <laughs> and the people appreciate it and clap and we come out back and one night I was going through the window, going back in. Mm. I always pay my brother to let me out and let me in back. <laughs> and then they caught me <laughs> and give me a beating. <laughs> but that didn't stop me. <laughs> the sound system was like, next door maybe there was a big sound. Down a couple of yards there was a big sound. Up the upside maybe there was a next big sound again. A lot of sound in my area. Yeah, yeah, you were them for bridging, my bridging them. God, I always have a lot of big man friends. You were was one of them. You were I, sax man, singing, um, me and him singing like Humanity. Humanity, humanity, me sing harmony like. Yeah. All, all those royal racist songs, me sing harmony like. And Cedric man, Cedric from, from the Congos, mm -hmm. he's, he, he sings in them as well. Yeah. And Johnny Cool and Peter King <laughs> and sax. So it's a one big friendship, and you know, um, cultural roots, that group. Yeah, my friend has a Brooksy. We used to like hang out. Sometimes late in the night, we were walking home. Some mm. people say, wait, where are you so late on the street? I said, we're my friend. Mm. I just, you know, we live in the same year, King's on the level here. Industry. Nobody introduced me. We just born right now, the area, everything happening. Mm. Because just down the road, you have um, Wildflower, where Bob Marley by now. And call it Tough Gang. I have West Indies, which they call um, West Indies World. They call Dynamic Sound now. And that those two are right now in my backyard. Okay. Yeah, I'm just go down there. I'm, every day I'm, I know I'll watch, man, I'm a friend. Hmm. But one day, you know, I went down there picking up some record, Miguel. And I went, when I went around here, I, I saw. Toots and the Matels, Derek Morgan, they were having a session inside. And I creep in the studio and sit down right beside, I think it was Winston Wright. I'm saying, you would sit down here, so I'm sit down and I'll take in everything. I'm saying, you know what, I'm this me like, you know. <laughs> yes, from that, I just, I know all the artists, everyone. Me was not really a sufferer. My people have a few cup of money and things. 
So, I you know, wasn't a struggle, but me, re, re, I left my yard and go down by Huntsville Lane to my school friend then. And sometimes I carry my clothes and then we go to school from there. Come like you don't let me live. <laughs> so, and you have a lot of musical people down here. Ross Michael and the son of Migos, all them people. Eh? So, we just feel like uh, two, me have more freedom when we're out there. So, we mm. can't do it in my yard because me, they may beat me. Yeah, so we, have, we get more freedom. So, we just run here and go down there with them. Yeah, yeah, in my, my brother used so um my brother's a good bass man. So we have this box guitar and Sly was like come in my, my brother come here. I think there was checking girls and come uh, next some pretty girl look like you next door. <laughs> so they come <laughs> and they over there talking and we have this song, that's why I write this song, G Baby. I have the guitar and I play it. And brother said, give me, give me this guitar. And brother started playing the guitar and says, you sing. And I start singing and then Sly get a butter pan, a cheese pan, a New Zealand cheese pan. Remember it good. And I have two pieces of stick and start playing on the job. Yeah, and then my brother carried him to Orange Street. And from there, he started. The first song, Sly play on that same song. Because I went to the studio and this guy, like some of the artists didn't turn up. And I say, um, who the artists don't come? Some say, Ali, oh, having a song to sing? I say, yeah. And I say, gee, baby, I don't want to cry over you anymore. And I say, what can I hear that song that? You don't have no more song. I say, no. So, as a matter of fact, you never come to record me. So I don't have advice. So I walk out of the studio. But you, he's going to lose his studio time. When he run, come come back, man. Come, all right, come sing it. <laughs> And I went back inside and sang the song. Mm. And it's my biggest seller today, to this yeah. time. Three times it's going at the top ten. Right. <laughs> yeah, just, just press back the old stamper. Again, 72. Straight to number one for 13 weeks. In the reggae chart in England. Again, um, I think it's in the 90s. In the, no, in the 80s. And then in the 90s. I think about 93, 94. It go back in the chart again in the top ten. Mm. Yeah, that song make him a millions. Yeah. And him don't give nothing a penny. He keep everything for himself and the money put it out. So his business is so not too good like what it look like. Well Bonley Bonley him he's gonna meet the maker soon. He do whole of wrongs in this world. Yeah, he murder a lot of people. He no good. But, you know, I leave him to God. But, but do produce a whole heap of song for him. Because they can't produce them. They're liars. They don't finance the money in the studio time. Put him in a studio with a band. He can't do nothing. Mm. If you like me, we have talent. Do them things. Eh? Yeah, and John Jolas. Yeah, all right. If they're so good at what they do, oh, they cannot do anything now. <laughs> you see, check it out. If all these guys, they say, oh, I'm big time, I'm big time, they know big time. Mm -hmm. uh, rubbish. They can't do nothing. Send them in the studio with a musician, they don't know what to do. People like me, we boost them up and they keep me under, <laughs> under cover. <laughs> but you know, that's the world, that's how the world goes sometimes. Rubbish. But I put them out because, you know, it makes sense I put them out and other people are going to benefit from it. So, I just keep them. They give me some them. The son have them under control. But my little smart like me, I have them things. They never do like what me do. So, I just look, look on their um, mistake and correct myself. So, I just make a whole pass song and give me some them. And say, so keep these. If anything happens, you still have to have camera for the rest of your life. Yeah, well, Lee Perry are the baddest producer ever. Mm -hmm. Not a real producer, Lee Perry. Right. And Jam is, um, Jam is his own can mix too, but he's not a big time producer. No, well, back then, Scientist was a new sensation of coming in. And the reason why Scientist come in at the business is through me. Because I booked the studio mm -hmm. to work with Jamis right. or Tubbies. And Tubbies take my money, and then when we come down, he might show me, say, Boy, I work with a youth. I said, Tommy, so you're going like an idiot. 
<laughs> so anyway, Tubby said, no man, him, all right man. Him. So anyway, him come. And we said, me have one, I think a one hour, you know, me have. No, my vice album in a one hour, but me have other time. So my vice, the tune, him take the tune him good. Mm. But when the mixing, he mixing out everything out of the rhythm. Mixing it. I'm saying, hey, send this way I do. But it's because I have to go to London. Mm. I'm say, you know what? Um, Alright, make it run. And he mix, he mix the tune, man. And this little youth was there was helping him. Um, Lucky and that about three of them, we know about the board and pub. But well, there I help him to a mix and a drought and a take out things and a thing. So him get the whole of the credit, but it's not him to do everything. Those youth are the youth that really do it. So I go to England now and reach England, I check my sister and I check one of my brother. And then I find these guys have a sound system and I cut some of the tune from dub and give them. And they start to play it. And then I kept chat take the tune to Green Sleeve. And Green Sleeve said, I don't want it. I said, all right. He said, this tune big already and you don't even get, take it. He said, all right, no, that was too lovey dovey soft. They like, you know, we like hardcore and reggae. He said, okay. We take it to JB, you know. I said, JB, we have this song. JB said, all right. And JB cut the stamp and put it out. Mm. That song sold over 75,000 in you know, the first three months when it came out. Right. It could it could go in the top ten in the, in the, in the British chart because tune have to sell ten thousand to go by that border. I might tune sell seventy five thousand, but because JB don't want to pay no tax and you know there's tough people them keep you back in life. Anyway, we put out jamming after and then feedback and all of them hit number one, number one, number one. So I went on to Green Steve now one day. And Green Seed said, call me and say, Trinity, give Green Seed a Barrington Levy, the first Barrington Levy song for him sing name, Lose Respect. And Trinity said, I'll meet me around at Green Seed. I'm saying, all right, me and him go around at Green Seed. And Green Seed said, um, Al, you know, anybody have any more Barrington Levy? Can you want to put out the album? I said, yeah, I know a man around at Greenville Towers for Bernard Gary. Um, John Jalaz, him round here and things. So, I go for John John. When I go for John John, Trinity said, No, I don't go for him because he must stop the business. <laughs> and I said, No, you know, every man deserves a chance. So, anyway, we go around the him and carry him to Green Sleep. But we can't, they make the deal and everything. And I say, All right. So, Green Sleep take the Barrington Leave LP from John John. It was Charlene Temple. And then him do a uh, bounty hunter. And I said to the old boy, I said, Oh, no, the, him said to me, say, um, Chris Cedric, he said, Oh, um, Al, that song, late night, do what's a monster hit? He said, Yeah. He said, But it's too bad for you, I can't take it around here to give you any, and that your friend said, Don't want it. He said, What? He didn't get mad. He said, Carl, Chris, and the next Chris, Chris, Chris Cracknell, I said, <laughs> Why didn't you take the song when we come? Him, oh, you know, it wasn't up to our standard. And him, the man said, see the song, you know? Big in a chart, number one, for 13 weeks, and they can't take it down. All right, we go on a Black Echoes magazine. The guy was putting on a show, and he asked me for artists. I mean, him, Johnny Asburn, Mystic in Roots, and some other artists. It was myself in you know, the concert. While I'm in the office, the same guy from Green Street called. I said, um, oh, Paul, why is that Al Campbell song still at number one? Paul says, you're the sales on the shop. I didn't put it there, the sale from the shop, that's how my chart go. If it's the biggest seller in every shop, it have to be at number one. Oh, there's other songs, so he said, other songs like what? He said, oh, brown sugar. Man said, that ain't selling, man. <laughs> yeah, I was going to go in there and fish him up, but I said, no, you know, it's all bad for my career. I don't want them things to say he's a man to go out and fight people. So the, the whole boy called me and gave me 15,000 pounds and said, go fish in some product, product and come back. And I go, go to Jamaica and do the, the other side of Love Album. Really, really love you. I've got to love you. <laughs> All I'm doing is P number one. The album go number one. The disc comics go number one. 
everything. And all he was fighting about, he my feet back in the road. So, you know, sometimes you um, underestimate people. Yeah. Never underestimate nobody. Everybody have their own gift. They must have to find it. <laughs> yeah, well, I was in school here. And I saw him and yeah, bring him to a big accent. And he said, Leroy, the little man bring the next little man to sing. <laughs> and he, he sing, um, my wife sang him sing, say, My girl has left me and gone away. That was the original for the nanny goat, where Larry Marshall sing, but Jacob Miller read him down. That's the first reggae song. The song, first reggae song, Jackie Me Too. Them create reggae writers. I hear Toots saying this and other people saying that, but that is the first reggae song. Jacob Miller made the first reggae song. And he sing, um, Love is a Message. Two songs him do the Wednesday. I was there with him, neck and neck. Can we have a teacher? He said, No, don't go. Hold on. Yeah, take it right there. Can we have a time in? Yeah, we sit on the uh, Roman Stuart as well. We came to Capson. Yeah, Freddie sing two, Freddie McGregor sing two songs, yeah. went back to the country, and I go for him and bring him back to the studio. I see him as a big star now. They don't mention me, but God don't give me praises already. So, yeah, no, no, no. Sugar Mine and, and Johnny Adburn, they just go and sing and people with him, but we make rhythm around the studio. Mm. Yeah, we are original. I fashion and me make I fashion, that's my song. Yeah, okay. You also wrote for uh, Count Shelley with Pat Kelly, right? Yeah, well, that was the time when Bonnie Lee, you know, I do some work with um, the Count And me and Pat Kelly um, started producing songs then. Our producer a whole lot of songs. And he's come to England and get a whole bag of money and come back and never give him a thing a penny. Twice he do it. So we say, I can't be bothered with these people. You know, I'm not working for nothing. And then we start getting my kids and also. I have to look out for my kids. And, you know, we just get fed up with them. We come to England, they want to use you. And we decide to say, no, they're not going to use me. But when we check out the music business, all of most of them, all of them are a bunch of thieves and liars and wicked. Yeah, it's true. Maybe that's why they don't like me. <laughs> because I'm tired of the truth. Yeah, because guys like Bonnie Lee and Nine and Phil Pratt and all them guys, they come and they collect the money and they over here and they live some big life. And when they come back to Jamaica, they come back with a sad story. Oh, I didn't get it. And when you call the company and the man said, Oh no, but I gave him 12,000. All right, for instance, let me give you something. This is that same song GBA when they come out and sell. Set the, the disco mix. No, the 45 sells 75,000 and the disco mix sell about 50,000. And the album sell a lot. When I come to collect my ride, I see Pratt come to Jamaica and the they bring one water boot. I don't know what kind of shoes that they bring from give me. I say, we are from family and the disco ring. I say, boy, I don't know that I could have You see, when we come to England, I say, I'm sorry, I want to ride. He tells me, oh, Magnet is going to give you royalty. You magnet have your royalty there. At times I lie. Nothing will go like that. So when I, he have to take me to Magnet because I have some powerful friends in England. So he have to watch me, and the moon hurt him still. We will go around to Magnet. Magnet in a big junkyard. <laughs> so we go in and say, um, hello, yeah, I'm Alcan. He say, oh, pleased to meet you, pleased to meet you. Some say, well, I've come from a royalty. He said, royalty? He said, no, he said, Pratt, why am I never paid him? He said, so, Pratt, no, in our corner. Some say, Pratt, you never give me some money now. He said, boy, he didn't give me any money. But he said, the man said, right for them, he said, yeah, he gave you money. What do you do with the money? Remember, you know, he didn't want to record the song, you know? And him take all the procedure of them, 150,000, 75,000, all the royalty, they take the whole life. Yeah. And magnet to me, you know, and say, boy, I'll 
I know me have faith in you and I know you can make it. He said, but you have faith in me and I don't get the money. That not going to work. <laughs> so this is what he said. I have a... I can give you a TV, the old second hand TV. I should have really box him, but you know, we just, we just laugh and walk away. He said, I can give this TV and a fridge right there. If you can sing, play a rhythm for me. If you can make a song on this rhythm. So I just look at him. I'm saying, you know, the best of you guys. I'm going to walk away and leave them. I never heard nobody. I'm just walk away. Cox are better than all of them. <laughs> I don't know what it is so that I'm always giving money. And some of them they are too light. They make a can. With Cox now, tell you what right say. You don't sell me the song for £10. Or ah, you go with royalty. But you couldn't wait forever. And the song not come out. Right? So most artists say, alright, give me the £10. All of them do it. So when you hear them start talking this and that, they are lying. When you see them, they keep them out. And they know it's the truth. Cox says, I work on a coxswain and it's 30 shillings per harmony. So we, every day we sing all 10, 15 harmony. And sometimes when the coxswain check up the money, he say, no, oh, how much do we have here? 60 pounds. <laughs> you marry, don't do no work. Remember, in the old time, a, a man doing work, civil service, I get £2.50. And me I get, in a one session, I get 60 pounds. <laughs> More bigger than him. So anyway, me, me just take um him say, alright, come tomorrow, me pay this. But don't sing no more song. But by the time we, we go tomorrow, other people come and want harmonies. So me have a little black book, me just cross a line and write it down. And he never he was a bad guy because enough time we go there and broke. And I said, Mr. Dad, no, the money give me two pounds fifty. I always give him money all the while, hard way. Even in the last time, I said, Mr. Dad, we want a gas money. And I said, I laugh and say, you have this big BMW on you, you can't buy gas. I started laughing. You know, just before him dead, you know, we go back up there. I'm finish the album for him. Bad, bad album. And plus, he did have enough one, two tune and some song with me and Freddie used to sing. He might be holding them up on the table. So he beg me write them down and write them on a list and give. And he was gonna come with the album, but he just died. Yeah, yeah well, nine he come and said, "I'm going to find back unique." So I said, "All right." We went and we did two projects. Carnel Campbell, that project has Carnel Campbell, and me and the Tamlins harmonized the whole album. I don't know why they don't hear nothing about the album then. And now they get it mixed up with some of the Unix album tracks. Eh? And I don't know why they do one bag of rubbish. I'm sure you them can't think. Joke at them. But the Unix is never really gone away. We just do the album and then Carnell called me and said, I'm not singing with Jimmy Riley. I don't know where Jimmy Riley do it. <laughs> 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 And I said, no, I don't want to sing with him all. Better we get Randy Davis. I said, yeah, Randy Davis, all right, you know. But I don't want to carry out that Unix name there. Because I don't like Unix when Slim Smith lead. Right. Yeah, they, they really want that. I can't help can't sing, you know, but he never match up to Slim Smith's standard. He, he write it and sing it for Pratt and Pratt, Phil Pratt, the same producer I tell you about. Yeah. He make John Hall sing the man's song. And then, and first and write, what about the half that's never been told? But then this won't sing too. Yeah. Yeah, and then me, I work at North Coast, I sing Entertain Tourists. And I woke up on a Santana album. When I wicked this album, I don't remember his name all now. And me hear a song by the name Black Magic Woman. And I, I write it out, the lyrics and sad verse it, and I I'm go sing it for Pratt. And two twos at Dennis Bone used to sing it and then release it. Yeah, a lot of these things go on. Chinna played the guitar like Santa. Black magic Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was Tony Chin number. They didn't remember that I didn't play the songs. I'm saying, hey Tony, are you playing them songs there now? 
Let me say, you gotta play some song. I tell them they have um, Juna Biles, and they have a wicked drummer named Max. He, he could sing, wicked singer. But I don't know, the man is kind of crack out. Huh? The last time I see him, I land and I see him. Uh, that was sweet. I have my own inspiration. I don't get no inspiration, man. Just listen. I have my own thing. In time, I think click in. You can hear there, I just don't know why I hear something coming to me. I say, Tum, tum, ding, 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 but me know I'm a good. <laughs> I don't like boost myself. <laughs> I mean, it's my phone. We can't play my phone. Sometimes they work, I just take my phone and some wicked idea come to me. I'm just put it on the phone now. It helps to, to store some of the things you normally that lose. But I may have a songbook with about 500 songs in it. Right? And Freddie, take my songbook and carry a rehearsal and he will not carry it back. I lose a whole heap of good song. And sometimes them songs they come back to me. Is that me? The summer quiet. I mean, see, everything just come right back to me. I mean, they say, what? I just hold my phone now and put it back on my phone to save it. Yeah, me say, artists come, artists go, music come, and music change. And now it's a different thing now because most of them man they say they're a producer. They ain't no producer. They can't produce. And they don't have no idea. They just come and say, ah, play a song like Answer them. Play high fashion them. Play real rap. Yeah. That's how they go. They, they run out of idea. They don't have no idea. But the real man, that's why when I was in Jamaica, everything used to, but we used to leave, like, me out in the morning. We pass a channel one. We go to see somebody and do something, and we go in and listen and say, oh, no, no, play so play that way then. They might get free education. Me I educate them. And we go in a mixing lab. We go to Scratch Studio. But when we go to Scratch Studio, we're gonna go learn. Can you say Scratch? Scratch are the best. Scratch Perry, yeah. We like to when Scratch mix a song. Him just like him, him just chip in the piano and run go by another corner or whatever. And then him run come back and him stand up and him be your time dance little. And I look a short, look a short like a battery rider. <laughs> so we that joke. We sit down and talk about it. We go here and say, we're going to scratch there. And the man have on a battery rider. And the dinner, and mix a tune and go on with all the time of things. Because, <laughs> you know, artists are some loving people. We always sit and have a joke about everything. No, no, you hear me now. You don't want me to be adjustable. Right. I adjust myself wherever anything comes. I don't limit myself. There's no limit for me. They them say soul tomorrow, I'm going soul. So, let me do And most of them idea there too. You know what, I read my name, Punani. And my name is that. Let me show you how these people, them stay. Steal it, come to the studio. I do an album for my virgin name, Courage. A millionaire man, I have plenty of money. I have a hotel, I have a name. And we bring him to the Soji from Channel One, bring him to the business, and Soji introduced me to it. And we go there and we sing me through. We come with a new style, we call it Reggae Lipso. And steal it, the pan session. And him like the free. I don't even done my song, you know. It don't mix or nothing. Eh? All when I do and go for jammies, I, I hear me song in the song play. In the jammies, in the, in the studio. I'm saying, steal it. And I'm sad laugh. <laughs> when I go for Mr. Dad, now I hear my lyrics. Because my song said, The girl just a want some way. Me never know, say, I saw she did stay. Take my money and she ran away. Laugh after me the next day. Barry Brown, we hear my lyrics, I sing these lyrics. So, you know, the whole them is. <laughs> yeah, Barry Brown, I sing lyrics, TV song, and I sing it for Coxon. 
So it was, all of them is a pincher. They take your ideas fast. Honestly, you have one or two bad singers over there, right? I'm not telling you, like, I'm here like a youth band. One part of the time, really, I sing um, a new Happy New Year. You, 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 like, yeah. He kind of sound like a young bear summer. He sound like that. He name Altitude. Or Attitude. Or me here, one of things. He sound not bad. But you have some of them can sing like the uh, Romeo and Virgo, them, and them one day. Them, them can sing. Lucy D, them, and yeah, them tough. Chill out you, them, yeah, my school as them. Them good, Luciana. No, sir, because. Yeah. Let me see the man do something to help them, but me you know the man they want some big money when you can't afford. And them not going away. Look, we bring in um when me have help John Joe produce a song them and thing. We bring Ecamos and make Ecamos come sing what are them. I know where him do. When John Joe come to England, we send for John Joe and John Joe come to England and John Joe get a deal them and everything over back down. I buy him Mercedes. I'm through a big stone that John Joe broke Mercedes glass. Oh. So, yeah. Same come from money. He made the song I play on the radio. He don't know that we have to pay the radio man to play the song. Mm. Yeah, me and the man we go pay, give the man the money so me know. So we go give the man the money and say, um, why you play them song here? So the man asked me, why you don't play one of your songs? He said, no, I'm all right. Watch me. Just give the money. And it's to my friend hear the song and tell him, so, why oh, the song I play it sell? He wasn't selling nothing. After I'm through the big thing in this car, people start talking about the song, people start buying the record. Yeah, I know. You know, when I met song, the, um, pick up the telephone, an uh, oversized man was going like 1,500 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know them do that. That's some real, like, when the grass is green, they, they're not selling a lot of money right now. They, they, they call it musical action. <laughs> they bid feed. Yeah, I know. That's, but one time I come to, I hear about the action and I run and get to a copy of the record and I'm cut the stamp and press it quick. I start flood the market. Yeah, you ain't gonna make no money off of me. You're in tune to Jam World 876. This is Al Campbell. Big up yourself. Late night blues, gotta find me a spot. I'm gonna take up my shoe and rock it in the late night blues. Boom, bang! Well, thank you for your time. Yeah,